Hi everybody, Richard again here from Electric Classic Cars and this week's video is going to be a little bit different than most because we're on a little bit of an adventure. We're going to Supercar Fest which is about 150 miles away and I'm going to take the super mega fast Beetle with a Tesla motor in the back and we're going to be towing it with my uh, Tesla powered Land Rover. I know a lot of people always ask, oh can you tow with an electric Land Rover? Well, Yes, you can, but I guess we're about to find out. So we're going to head off now. I'm going to probably stop a few times to charge up and have something to eat. And you're going to follow the journey of us going to the Supercar Fest. And there's going to be a separate video of us at the Supercar Fest spanking the butts of a couple of supercars and hypercars in the Beetle, hopefully. And maybe we'll even sneak the Land Rover onto the uh, airstrip as well. So join us on this journey and see how we get on towing with an electric Land Rover. All right, so we're on our way, and we've done so our zero of the trip when we started. Oh, we're on whoop, 25 miles, and we're down around about, I'd say, 18, 18 or 19 percent. So I've got to say, this is so easy to drive, and it's not as if this is the first time I've towed with this vehicle, because I've towed quite a lot with this vehicle, but it's fair to say that. I need to explain and describe what it's like to you guys. So it's really, really simple because there's no gears. You come up to roundabouts and there's no, oh, down we go, up we go again, clutch control this, oh, what okay, I'm in now, brake, brake, brake. It's just one pedal to accelerate and the regen is awesome because essentially, coming up to a roundabout, you hardly even need to touch the brakes. And you only need to touch the brakes literally when you come into a stop. So no gear changes. Just keep your foot. I can. I haven't overtaken anything, which makes a change. But I'm definitely not got a line of traffic behind me. That's for sure. We're just keeping up with uh, all the traffic that's around us. So so far, so good. Right. First stop of the day. Kind of uh, unscheduled stop, really, because Captain Slapladder over there needs a wee. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to grab a coffee and uh, probably penguins. Hopefully, I don't know. Some some chocolate biscuits. Other chocolate biscuits are available. Right, what are the numbers? That's what you're more interested in. So we've done, so we're down to 60% charge and we've done 50 miles. And I put it on the CCS charger here now. Now we've got a peak CCS charging on board of 150 kilowatts, but I think this is only 50 kilowatts. Let me check, just check. Uh, oh no, it's 120 kilowatts, happy days. So uh, we'll go in there, have a quick five minute break and we'll get on our way because the, the plan was just to do one stop, but we're just going to do a quick stop here and then go on to the main place we're going to stop later. But it has introduced um, our first problem of the day. And this is something that the charging infrastructure in the UK is going to have to sort out, which is the fact that if you can see around here, Tim, it's like go and show we've lost, we've lost the trailer. So you can't charge up with the trailer. And that's going to be a problem going forward for anybody that's got caravans or towing things in the future for electrified transportation. So charging infrastructure, we're going to have to definitely sort out charging for vehicles with trailers going forward. So I've unhooked the trailer, it's over there, but let's go and grab some tea and we'll get on our way. Right, we're ready to go. I've had my wee, Tim's had his ice cream. And we've been, what, five, ten minutes, something like that? Yeah, five minutes, ten minutes. Uh, so we've got, I mean nearly 20 kilowatt hours in, 19.7 kilowatt hours in. So quick disconnect connect here now and uh, we'll be on our way. And uh, in fact, let's, let's see how much the percentage has gone up. So if I uh, stop the charge, put that back in, turn the ignition on and we'll see what we're up to. Oh, 82%. Happy days. That'll let's, do for the next round. Let's go, mate. Let's go. Right, we've stopped at our main planned destination charger. It's CCS charging at uh, 50 kilowatts at the moment. So this is always the charge top I planned to stop at. Um, and now I need a wee, so I'm going to be quick. Uh, we're down to 40%. Uh, we've only actually got around about 15 miles left, is that how much? Yeah, we're nearly there now. So uh, we actually could have driven straight there, to be fair. 
um, but where we're going uh, has no charge point. So we need to kind of go there and get back in the morning. So we thought, right, we'll uh, stop here, I don't know, uh, 10, 15 minutes, whatever, something to, uh, enough of a break to have something to, uh, to eat, basically, because we're also starving. So, uh, so far it's been really stress-free, isn't it? Yeah, Simple. it's been great. It's been really smooth. Nice and smooth, you know, no stress whatsoever. I mean, we've been, we set off around about two o'clock. What time is it now? Six. Six, so four we, hours worth of journey. We, we set With off later, th later than two, we set off nearly three. So I set off nearly three o'clock, uh, 10 minute break earlier on, and uh, yeah, we'll probably have something to eat here. So I think with the trailer on towing, we're at around about 125 mile range. Usually driving this thing is anything up to about 150, 180 mile range if you take it easy. So I don't think it's actually affected the range as much as I thought it would do. I'm quite surprised. And I think that's because um, we're driving at around about 60 miles uh, on the motorway, 55 miles on the um, main road. But I think the weight is actually putting a bit more in from the regen side of things. So I think that's helping. I certainly see the amps gauge kind of go way up on the regen side of things, which obviously is putting energy back in the battery. So there we go. We'll have a stop here for something to eat, get, up, get in back in the car, and carry on. Right, we've arrived, and um, uh, what was it, 140 miles, wasn't it? On Just the over 140 miles, yeah. So we stopped uh, for five minutes at uh, Telford. Telford, and then we had about 40 odd miles in. Yep, and then we had around about half an hour stop when we stopped for the main stop to charge up yeah. and had some burgers and what have you. And then we've arrived with, I think it was about 60% in the battery, wasn't it? Yeah, still had so, a fair bit in the battery. By my calculation, it's around about 125 mile range, towing the trailer. And it probably wouldn't have, well, it wouldn't have made it. I mean, it would have needed a quick stop. Yeah, it's, it was a one-stop trip, wasn't it? Yeah, so, but a, a quick one. Um, so, yeah, I mean, on the, on the pro side, um, really simple to drive, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a lot smoother than I was, you know, it was a... Effortless. Effortless, wasn't it? It was really smooth, Stressless, easy drive. Yeah. No gears, simple to drive. I mean, we stopped off at the CCS charger and charged up. And you just put it in, contactless payment, and off you went. It was really, really simple. And, you know, uh, we've arrived now, and I was a little bit worried there wasn't a charger in the hotel, but I found a 21 kilowatt charger <laughs> next door. And it's free. Don't tell my dad. <laughs> Don't tell the plug pirate. So we should be fully charged by the morning, which is yeah. fantastic. Yeah. So, so what's your conclusions then for well, for towing with a my conclusion gear? is, I mean, on the pro side, really simple and effortless to drive. Much more relaxing to tow than if I had a manual petrol or diesel. That's for sure. Cons, I would say. Um, Okay, you had to stop for like 10 minutes to charge up, but I'm not being funny. You know, one of the conclusions we definitely have on this trip is our bladder range is less than the vehicle <laughs> yes. range we, towing. Uh, we'd have had to do two stops. So bladder. E even if we had to We've stop got bladdering anxiety. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so that was, um, uh, I mean, one of the cons, I suppose, is the fact that I don't think charging infrastructure is set up for caravans yet. No. Because we had to unhook and unhitch to be able to charge up. Yeah. And yeah. that's got to change. Yeah. Um, but on the on the plus side of towing with a caravan, you can, when you get to your campsite, hook up with the electric hookups. Don't forget, because yeah. a lot of if caravan we were, if parks. If we were a caravan now, we'd be charging, wouldn't we? Exactly. While we were. Yeah. Okay, it'd be slow charging, but yeah. by the but morning. You've got all night. Yeah. So I think, in general, the conclusion is: yes, you can tow with an electric car. And, you know, we haven't got the most efficient electric car, let's face it, with that Land Rover. Aerodynamics is awful. You know, rolling resistance no. is it, terrible. I mean, it, when they're sort of developing the modern version of the SUV, it's going to be a lot more aerodynamic, um, rolling resistance, etc. You'd imagine the, the towing performance is going to be a lot better than we had today. Yeah. But even with our sort of ancient design, it was still pre pretty painless, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, in conclusion, Yes, you can tow with an uh, electric vehicle, and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, getting uh, some more beers in, because yeah. Tim's remembered his wallet for a change, yeah. not left it in his, uh, look, it's even here. Oh, Watch out look how light mops. that is. <laughs> There's nothing in it. 
Yeah. So we'll be we'll be here uh, getting a couple of beers tonight before we go into Supercar super Fest tomorrow. So uh, I think that's the end of this video. Yeah. yeah. Let's uh, get on with it. Let's get on with it tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Hope you enjoyed this video, guys, and we'll see you on the next one.